Hello future techies, my name is Ryan Kirchner and I'm the Associate Director of Recruitment for Purdue Polytechnic Institute. I want to welcome you to our second YouTube live broadcast that will give you some an opportunity to hear from our students here about their experience on campus and ways to get involved. Any last minute questions that you have as well we'll be able to answer. Uh, so that's our focus tonight, last minute questions. What do you want to know to help you make your choice of college and hopefully choose Purdue and Purdue Polytechnic? Um, so we have our three students here that are current Polytechnic students. I'll have them introduce themselves here in a minute. Uh, but first, a couple of housekeeping things. We do have a chat function as part of our uh, broadcast tonight. So you can log in with a Google account. In order to uh, interact with the chat, you need to create a YouTube channel. Um, you don't have to post anything after this is done, but it's just a way for you to show up in our chat. Um, you can also send an email to techrecruit at purdue.edu. Um, we'll be monitoring that and be able to respond to those questions later on. If we don't get to your questions specifically tonight, feel free to send an email to that email address and um, either myself or one of our staff members will be able to respond to you later on this week. Um, but yeah, again, we hope you interact with that chat uh, so that we can hear, which, hear from you so that we can respond to those questions specifically that you have right now. Um, so as, at this point, uh, we'll have our students introduce themselves. So why don't you just go ahead and uh, just tell us your name, where you're from, um, and we'll go from there. Well, I'll start. Um, so my name is Abhishek Balaji, and I am from Singapore. I'm studying Computer Information Technology at the Polytechnic Institute, and I'm a senior. <laughs> All right, my name is Gabriella Acosta. I'm from Hobart, Indiana, and I am a sophomore studying Industrial Engineering Technology. Hi, I'm Joshua Campbell. I am a fourth year student here at Purdue uh, in Polytechnic. My major is Aeronautical Engineering Technology. That's in the aviation uh, program, and I can answer more questions about that and others. All right. Great. Well, thank you all for coming tonight and uh, being available for our admitted students here. Uh, so first question, um, could you describe for the students watching what were some of the factors that helped you decide on Purdue Polytechnic and then Purdue in general as well? Um, start specifically with that Polytechnic major, why you chose that, um, and then go into what, what attracted you about Purdue as well. So Epshek, we'll start with you. Yeah. Um, so I'm an international student and so naturally selecting Polytechnic and Purdue was you know, from a very long distance away. So um, one of the key factors that I looked into was that the way in which uh, my major goes about. So I compared Purdue Polytechnic's computer information technology with a variety of other majors um, across the nation. And one thing that I saw was the more emphasis on labs and like kind of these hands-on things. I, I saw a lot of free spaces as electives, which initially daunted me, but then and later I thought about it and I said that is more opportunities for me to create the major that I want. Um, and so I thought this would be a good fit for me because I could explore my passion at college, but also tailor my major in the way that um, it's, it's beneficial for me. And then as for Purdue, I saw that this was a very welcoming community. Um, I, heard, I heard really good reviews about this from people who had gone here before. Um, and then I saw a lot of international student percentage, so close to about 20% of our student body is international. So that was uh, a neat factor. Uh, sure, go ahead. Um, for me, I have a different experience. Um, uh, well, he is international. I actually basically grew up around Purdue, so <laughs> some might think it was like, oh, that was his only choice. Um, uh, I didn't really realize growing up how great a resource Purdue was until uh, I'd say junior or senior year of high school. Um, not just the broad diversity of majors, students, um, even experiences with uh, co-op experiences like integrated uh, internships. Um, a lot more I could say about uh, all of that, but specifically how I kind of chose my major and uh, the school. Um, uh, a lot of students come in thinking engineering, like I like science, math, building things, uh, creating uh, something, solving problems. Um, and uh, a lot of times the two big schools you look at are engineering and what's now known as polytechnic. And um, uh, I was definitely daunted by engineering. Uh, I don't, uh, if you choose engineering, that's awesome. Uh, and I hope you excel there. Uh, since we're talking polytechnic, I might as well brag on us. Um, so, I mean, we are, uh, generally a lot more hands-on as you get in like higher uh, higher years. Um, a lot of the polytechnic uh, labs are uh, very specific to your major, very practical for the work you would be doing in that field after uh, you graduate. Um, for instance, my major in aviation uh, is essentially kind of the hands-on with uh, everything aviation. So we deal with 
uh, learning how uh, to build aircraft, fix aircraft, even some design elements with composite technology that's also involved in our major. So we have labs where we're doing carbon fiber layups. We have labs where we are learning the FAA approved methods for uh, fixing an engine, doing inspections, uh, uh, you know, what's airworthy versus not. Um, so very applicable, at, you know, specific within my major. Overall, um, uh, especially engineering technology, very, very hands-on program. And going off of what Joshua said, um, that's one of the things why I chose, like the biggest thing, reason why I chose Polytechnic is the hands-on aspect and the ability, the way that it's so diverse and like you can get a little bit of everything even though you decide on one major. So for example, when I came here, um, I started out in mechanical engineering technology and while I loved it, I realized along the way um, I wanted to work more with people. So that's when I realized I wanted to switch to industrial engineering technology um, because I'm um, one of those people that loves problem solving, loves design and innovation, loves thinking new ideas and working with people. Um, so that's one of the things that I gravitated towards. And what I found amazing was through that rough transition where like, where you go through that um, transition where you're like, oh, I don't think I'm in the right place, um, was how easy it was to um, change majors or what we call codoing, mm -hmm. um, basically with the signature of your advisor and um, a meeting to schedule your new classes for, next, for the next semester. Um, that's as easy as it is. Um, and so while I'm there now, I also picked up a minor in computer graphics technology because I do like that 3D modeling aspect. Um, so um, that's why I chose Polytechnic. Um, you get a little bit of everything, and it's, it's fun. I love it here. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, it's a good introduction to Polytechnic and Purdue in general. Um, so if you can think back, I know you guys are a little bit older um, in terms of your, your years here at Purdue, um, but what were some of the questions that you might remember having about Purdue or the Polytechnic that you wanted to know some more information? Um, what were those questions and how did you go about getting that information and what information did you end up finding out? Yeah, um, I, I, I can start, out, start that off. Like one of the questions that I had was, um, how does Polytechnic differ from the engineering school versus the College of Science and, and all of that? And naturally, in, in my field, computer information technology, there were a lot of different majors with a very similar name at Purdue. And so I asked myself, where, what is the distinguishing factors between them, and then where do I belong? And I think the best way that I understood that was I pulled up a plan of study, and for the viewers, the plan of study is just a list of the classes you'll take in the four years, including choices of electives and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I pulled that up and I kept it side by side, right? Um, and in my day, I printed it out. You could do it on digital. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that really helped me see sort of what are the classes I'm going to take, where do I picture myself, and where it said electives, I didn't necessarily pick my electives, but instead I looked through the list of options I had and asked myself, where would I feel more comfortable at? And I think that really helped me understand, firstly, what were the differences without just, you know, uh, I guess boilerplate texts and websites and things like that. But just I found out what were the differences between these computing-related majors at Purdue. But then this also allowed me an equal ground to compare Purdue's computer information technology versus another school's, you know, computer something. Uh, degree. So that was one of the questions I had, and that's how I went about it. Do you guys want to share something? I'm still, do you have any on you? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> when I came here, um, I've always been an introvert and like kind of socially awkward, but so I'm always looking for things to occupy my time with. And when I came, when I came here, I was really interested in what organizations I could join and what clubs I could do, what things I could do, um, because I was a very busy bee in high school, a <laughs> bunch of clubs, things like that. Um, and so my first semester of college, I came here. I wasn't really in any organizations, but I did have a weekend job. And then um, at my second semester, I actually took um, a women in technology course um, um, taught by Ms. Tony Munguia, who works in our Office of uh, Recruitment Retention Diversity. And she actually recommended me um, to join the Minority Technology Association, um, which is a club for polytechnic students um, that are minority students um, who just want to have a place where they see people like them and just have a place to belong and things like that. So I'm pretty heavily involved with that. Um, and Joshua and I actually just came from a meeting for elections. And <laughs> yeah, so um, that was my, one of the biggest things that I learned and what I was curious about when I came here. And there's definitely a lot of organizations. I know you're in stage, correct? Yeah, and yeah, you know, so. just, to, just to add to that, yeah. um, one thing that I noticed was when I, when I came here, I came from a small high school and I said, 
this is huge, how do I get myself involved here? And I think the best thing to understand about Purdue is that although it's really large, if you put your hand up, you're going to get involved in some way. Um, there's so many different initiatives going on, some of them within your major, some of them within the Polytechnic School, and then some of them that are just Purdue-wide, right? Um, so by putting your hand up, it was, it's easy to kind of just get involved. And although it kind of, it seems daunting in the beginning, but it really isn't once you start, you know, getting the ball. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't you agree with that? Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks for, I mean, kind of got me thinking. Uh, in addition with what Abhishek and what they both said, one question I had was like, uh, you know, how do you make Purdue, you know, 30,000 undergrad student campus uh, feel like home? Um, and, you know, again, echoing what they said, uh, kind of finding uh, where, like, how can you meet people that are, you know, some that are interested in what you're, uh, interested in, and also how do you meet people uh, that you, uh, you know, just jive with, even with different interests, uh, different areas, um, even across uh, different, uh, like, majors, uh, different colleges. Um, and there are a lot of ways you can do that. I mean, whether it's picking up a minor that's, like, outside of your program. For instance, uh, like I said, I'm in aeronautical engineering technology and aviation, but I also have a Spanish minor, so, like, even meeting people uh, through that um, has been really neat. And uh, within that uh, study abroad opportunities, you know, even if it's with, it can be with your major, it can be with a minor, uh, it can be just an elective class you have, you want to add and just kind of make it fit in your schedule. Um, for mine, it has happened to work into my foreign language minor. Um, so, uh, you know, just making those connections there. Uh, there's student orgs and a very, very wide range of interests, uh, professional development, um, Greek life. Uh, there's also um, like professional development fraternities and sororities that are uh, kind of different uh, Greek life experience. Um, I mean, uh, extracurriculars, sports, um, you know, very, very wide range. So like for students at home, you know, kind of thinking about uh, the college years, uh, you know, encouraging you to both look for what interests you and also for something that maybe you haven't tried before in high school, like maybe you're like, oh, if I had the time, I would love to do that, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, you know, while you have the time to still kind of choose and be, um, uh, you know, strategic about it, um, saying, hey, you know, they have a kendo club, maybe I want to get involved in this martial art, or they have a Disney Appreciation Club, you know, maybe I can do that, or, you know, just two... Uh, examples, but a lot of cool opportunities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we had a great question come in from our chat. Um, so the question is, when do you have to declare your major, and do you have first-year classes that help you introduce students to a variety of majors, um, maybe within your specific academic department that you're in? Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that experience, Gabby, um, since you kind of changed your major? Yeah. Uh, how, did that, how did that process look for you? Well, um, I know for Polytechnic, there's a lot, of, there's one course in particular that MQB mine is that everyone has to take, which is Tech 120. Absolutely. Um, so with my experience, um, I got to meet a lot of people from different backgrounds. And what they try to do is group you together with people from different majors, um, and you come up with a um, solution or um, an idea that um, will later on in the semester be um, yeah implemented or presented and things of that mm -hmm. sort. So when I was there, I was in the mechanical engineering technology and I was grouped with um, a computer graphics technology student and an electrical engineering technology student. And um, it was pretty, like, I don't know, I came from a heavy engineering technology background from high school, so I kind of knew, um, like, the process to go um, and how to go about working with you. Um, to find a solution to problems and things of that sort, but it was never, we were all from the same background, from the same educational standpoint, so it was easy to see, or it was interesting to um, work with people from different backgrounds and see how we work together, come up with a solution, and yeah, yeah so that was one of the big things. That I and one thing I wanted to add to that is that when you apply to the Polytechnic, you'll notice that there are a lot of different majors that you can pick from. Mm -hmm. um, some of them will be kind of a little bit more generic. So like in my own field, there's computer information technology, mm -hmm. and then there's systems analysis and design and things like that. So if you are wondering on whether you, you know, if, if you know for a fact that cybersecurity is your passion, then pick it. If not, perhaps you might want to try something like a computer information technology, and then if you like it, you can switch mm -hmm. over to that cybersecurity field. And one thing that's neat about the Polytechnic is that we encourage that switching, and it's yes. about finding your passion and going forward with that. So making that switch is not difficult by mm -hmm. any means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, I guess one thing to kind of know coming into Polytechnic, there are maybe four main areas I know I can think of, uh, all kind of within Polytechnic, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but six. Six, okay, <laughs> six. Uh, he knows obviously more than me. Um, uh, the ones I can think of, aviation, uh, we have now six majors within that, so obvious one, flight, uh, my major, the hands-on, which is AET, Aero, Engineering Technology. Um, there's like the flight management, and a couple pretty similar to that also, um, unmanned aero systems, which is basically drone piloting. Within aviation, there's like uh, separate engineering technology, uh, which consists of like mechanical, electrical, electrical and computing. Mm -hmm. um, there's kind of the computing side with CNIT, uh, the cybersecurity. Um, computer graphics. Yeah, computer, yeah, 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 kind computer of the computer graphics, graphics being, mm -hmm. uh, I think, even kind of a separate one, because there's a lot within that. Yeah. Um, those are the ones that I have in mind. But again, yeah, like kind of maybe knowing in general what you want to do. Uh, and then uh, I'd say within the first year is when you would want to, uh, for the sake of like graduating in a uh, good amount of time, within the first year would be a good time to shoot for to kind of decide at least a major. And of course you can pick up minors that might be, like if you have a couple different passions, you can be like, uh, maybe I want to major in this, but have this kind of minor because mm -hmm. it has a lot of the same classes except for maybe two or three more or um, you know you just love it so much that you're willing to have maybe six classes seven classes instead of just the recommended five yeah. so uh, just keep that in mind sure, absolutely um, and as you probably know you are when you apply to Purdue in the polytechnic you get admitted to a specific major um, but as they mentioned some of the introductory courses do allow for that exploration and understanding of what those other areas within your academic department may be so that you have that possibility yeah. and like you mentioned changing that major early does help with making sure you stay on that plan of study and, and graduate in four years and earn that degree in four years rather than adding an extra semester or yeah. victory lap as they call it <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but certainly if, within, if, you wanna, if your goal is that four year degree you certainly can do that um, within that four year that first year switch absolutely yeah. one thing I wanted to point out I actually also did change my major after my first semester so I started off in the flight school and then uh, decided I wanted uh, tell there's kind of a couple reasons one major one was I wanted kind of the job uh, d more job opportunities um, and piloting basically just prepares you to be a pilot um, which uh, you know if you know that and you're passionate about it is an awesome field um, for me, I wasn't quite sure, so it was better for me to have a program where I could kind of look at different opportunities. Um, so with that in mind, the first semester they had like, except for one, except for like the flying course, they had all the same courses. So I imagine in a lot of the programs they have first semester, or maybe first year mm -hmm. uh, within CGT or within the CNIT have the same classes and then based on the specialties. So if you want to do like the major uh, and then kind of specify. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely correct. A lot, of, a lot of the programs will have that one course where everybody's in it. Um, different sections certainly, so they're a little smaller, but you get that exploration, that understanding of what the department's all about essentially. Um, had a good question uh, from the chat about, that's kind of related to what we're talking about, when can you change your major? Um, so I believe it's at the semester breaks is when you're able to do that change of degree, the CODO mm -hmm. process is what we, have, what we call it here. Um, so at the end of each semester, you'll have that opportunity to work with your academic advisor to make that change, um, whether it's within the polytechnic or to a different department at college on campus. It's at the semester break when that is able to happen. I believe that's, that's typically the, the way it goes. But that said, if you are uh, certain like halfway through your semester that you want to change, then communicate that as early as you can to your advisor. Yeah, because absolutely. it's always much better to get it on their radar earlier than you know at, at the brink of the moment when you're trying to go for yeah. winter break or summer break. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean that. Uh, also, if you're thinking about like study abroad, like if yes. you come in knowing you want to do study abroad, I mean, I guess for anything that uh, you want to do that's maybe not just the typical, uh, you know, take all of one major and take all of those classes and graduate in four years, like, uh, you know, we definitely encourage study abroad and or internship experience and or uh, pursuing a minor. So like, uh, of course, the earlier you communicate that, uh, you know, to your advisor at least, and um, you know, the earlier the better, for sure. Yeah. 
Um, have a, another question from our chat for Abhishek specifically. Oh. Um, seeing that you are a senior now, about to graduate, um, we have some questions about where are CIT students ending up? What kind of job titles, companies that, are, that you're going to work for? Maybe talk about where you're heading after graduation yeah. as well. Sure, I can do that. Um, so after graduation, I'll be working at a company called Salesforce. They work on customer relationship management, and I'll be an associate product manager, and I'll be working in San Francisco, in California. So as for where they, you know, um, what sort of companies come out to recruit, you're going to see a variety of companies from your typical tech companies that are, you know, uh, coding some of the examples, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, things like that. And then you're also going to see some industry specific. So if you want to take like banking, for example, we have Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, these sort of people. And then within pharmaceuticals, people like Eli Lilly. So the opportunity is endless. Like, and, and I know that might sound like a cliche, but it is really true. Because when you go around in a career fair and you notice that there are maybe you know 200 companies that want your computer information technology majors, and they're all from different parts of the whole wide like, uh, economy in the market, that's amazing. Um, and as for recruitment, where do people go? Usually it's around um, the Midwest area, and that is only because most people want to stay near their family. But if you wanted to move out to the East Coast, West Coast, or the South, um, that is very well encouraged. I myself am moving to the West Coast, and I know so many people who are moving to Texas and um, the East Coast. As long as the company has a center, an operation center there, you're good to go. And because technology touches so many different, and especially computer technology, touches so many different parts of the economy and the market, there's pretty much a job for you in any company. Um, I, I was surprised to see even a, um, a furniture manufacturing company look for computer information technology <laughs> people. Um, and I think you also asked about job titles. Sure. Uh, typically the job titles you'll see is some people do want to go to your technical roles like software engineering, software, software developer, or uh, network analyst, and these sort of people. But there's also a good number of students who want to go into more of a managerial and IT combined role. So these roles are like your business analyst, mm -hmm. systems analyst, uh, or product management, what I'm doing. IT consulting is something that's picking up a lot. And we have people uh, from the big four, like Deloitte and PwC, to come in and um, recruit our students, and Accenture, I believe, also. Sure. So it's pretty much, again, all over. Database is another big one that people want to go into. But that's some examples of titles. Sure, absolutely. I want to point out um, that John, our behind the scenes uh, helper here, has put up a graphic related to the Polytechnic Career Fair. Um, so the Polytechnic Institute hosts multiple career fairs throughout the year. Um, on campus, we also have Industrial Roundtable. Um, construction Management has their own career fair. I believe CIT might have their own career fair. Yeah, so out. CIT is working on their own career fair. Sure. Uh, student organizations also put up career mm -hmm. fairs. So uh, I'm part of a student organization, and we put up a career fair for computing-related majors. So there's there's a plethora of opportunities. Right. For uh, aviation, we have at least one in the spring. I believe some one also in the fall, but. Yeah, yeah, so there are a lot of opportunities for you to interact with companies. Um, we also have a video on that website that is an interview with some of, some of the company representatives talking about why they uh, look for our Polytechnic students specifically and what makes them uniquely qualified for the positions that they have. Um, so it's a great check that out so you can get on a good understanding of what the career fair looks like and how our companies come to see Purdue Polytechnic specifically. Um, so you are about to go out to, grad to your yes. full time. Um, did you have any internships, and this is for the question for everybody here, any internships yeah. that you've participated in, taken part in, um, while you were a student here at Polytechnic? Yeah, um, I'll start off and then you guys can, <laughs> I don't want to hog this one. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in my freshman year, I was, I was fortunate enough to get an internship, which is not, you know, it doesn't happen for that often. But then later on, in my sophomore year, and then throughout my junior year, I worked part-time. Um, and again, my end of my junior year, I worked again in my summer internship. And those last three things were with Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So having established that connection and that, um, I guess, that boundary between me and them, um, I, really I really liked what I had experienced and I wanted to go back. But I also know a lot of people who had um, internship opportunities in different areas and then or different companies altogether and then they could go back and in their senior year and say, okay, I really like the company I worked for my sophomore year, I can you know, connect with them. and. Uh, see if I can get a full-time opportunity that way. Um, but internships, and I, I know we've been talking a lot about internships, but co-ops is another option as well, mm -hmm. where you can take a semester off. It's more, um, 
it, it's more dedicated in that you have the entire semester that you're going to work with a company. Usually they'll put you on a rotation, mm -hmm. which is good to see different parts of the company. And then at, when you graduate, that's usually the, their pipeline to convert you into a full-time. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah I, can guys want to yeah. I can speak more like specifically the co-op program. Um, I didn't mention, but um, I was also in the co-op. Uh, it's the, the Office of Professional Practice here at Purdue. And uh, so they primarily focus on engineering students, but uh, there are a lot of opportunities for, especially engineering technology um, uh, jobs as well. Um, so I was a co-op with uh, GE Aviation, and so their headquarters are in uh, Cincinnati area, so that was in the area of my first rotation. Um, second, I was in Dayton, Ohio, and um, uh, lastly in Terre Haute for a double rotation. So like uh, Abhishek was saying, rotational, um, both job title-wise and um, uh, location-wise, uh, if that's your preference. Um, and uh, so my first rotation, I was uh, working in a facility that deals with 3D printing of uh, aircraft engine parts. Uh, the next one was dealing with the turbine section of aircraft. Um, this last one, they built combustors. So if you are an aviation person, you know what that means. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to uh, look it up just for sake of time. <laughs> but um, uh, it was good to kind of see, you know, as I'm learning in a class about uh, this is an engine, these are the different parts, this is, you know, what kind of tolerances they have to uh, be built to. And then in my co-op, I was actually seeing, okay, so, uh, you know, uh, the um, uh, technicians are actually working on that combustor section or actually working um, on uh, that com air compressor or the fuel nozzles. Um, so it was really, really cool to see kind of like full circle. Um, and I even got to see um, parts that were all built for the same engine. So like the GE Leap engine, it was like, okay, I saw this part, I saw this part, I saw this part. So then they'll all come together for the assembly for one engine, which was pretty cool. So um, yeah, a lot of uh, opportunities, especially for um, uh, I'd say mechanical engine MET majors, double ET majors. Um, if you want to do a pro uh, a co-op, it'll be like with that one company for uh, either three or uh, five like alternating school uh, work semesters until you have like five or three work semesters. So I currently have not had an internship yet, um, mostly because I'm relatively new to my major. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, as, we, as Ryan mentioned before, there are wonderful resources in Purdue Polytechnic. Um, I think what generally one of the best resources is your advisor, um, because coming from a different um, field in Polytechnic, um, I still get emails from advisors saying, check out this internship, oh, yeah. they just posted this. So they're really great about wanting their students and giving them resources to find those internships. Yeah. But I did want to mention uh, something else, just adding on to that. Uh, one great resource for me in my uh, time here at Purdue has been the CCO, to Center for Career and Opportunities. And they are, in, in, everything from resume building to uh, mock interviews to actually helping you connect with a company, um, they kind of take care of all of that. And the best part is it's all free. So that's a great resource to leverage on. A lot of times companies will also post job um, applications and job uh, advertisements on the CCO's website. So that's a great way to sort of apply and all of that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was, you know, for all the viewers out there, when you do come to the Polytechnic or any, you know, any other place at Purdue, maximize your chances by attending as many career fairs as you can. Um, or if career fairs is not your interest and you want to do more research, then attend more research fairs. Um, because just because it's a management career fair or a you know, Purdue-wide career fair, don't think that it's not applicable to you because you have, I mean, recruiters want to see you. Um, the value of the Polytechnic degree is amazing and they want to see that. Mm -hmm. So maximizing your chances always helps. Yeah, even with what you said, you know, going to a lot of career fairs specifically, um, uh, you know, uh, so the industrial round table uh, is mostly, again, geared for engineering students, but again, a lot of uh, uh, Polytechnic students will get opportunities there. So I had gone to that my freshman year, um, actually didn't get anything from it, and some people might kind of testify it can be intimidating like it's a lot of people and it's like the second week in September so it's 
like 90 degrees, you know, <laughs> in, in, in Indiana it's like 120% humidity, <laughs> you're out there in your full wool suit, so, you know, uh, all of that to say, you know, it can be a kind of almost an intimidating environment, but it's still even good practice to practice what we call elevator speech, like uh, kind of promoting yourself for uh, the companies you want. Sometimes um, a strategy can be, you know, practice promoting yourself for a company you might not be as interested in, so then when you get to the company you are really interested in, you already have that practice, you even, you know, if they say, oh, we're not looking for students, you know, you can even practice a, oh yeah, you know, that's okay, I mean, I'll, uh, you know, I'm still interested in even knowing what the company's about, you know, you have uh, the tangible experience with uh, working with either the HR, uh, human resources rep that is in attendance, or, uh, you know, whomever it might be, whether it's even an interview, uh, you know, you can get a lot of interviews that way. So, you know, use those kind of opportunities uh, to your advantage. Great advice. I love that advice of talking to the companies you're not necessarily interested in. That's yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Just don't tell them that you're not interested. <laughs> don't. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> tell them you love them. Tell them so passionate. No, I mean, sometimes you can still get <laughs> offers and opportunities from the. You know, sometimes the shorter lines are still really, really good. You know, sometimes the shorter line might be a smaller company, mm -hmm. but it might be something that's you know you didn't know you were interested in until you had a conversation and then. Yeah. Might be a better fit for you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So you know, everybody's waiting in line for Microsoft, Exxon Mobil, you know, whatever it is related. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, everybody might not know about this small startup, but it might you know be really really uh, good for especially your passions. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, feel free to explore. Um, so you mentioned you two are doing a minor right now, correct? Mm -hmm. How did you? When did you start deciding to to pursue that minor and? Um, how did how did you work that out with your academic advisor specifically? Yeah, um, so I guess speak on that. For mine, I had been advised and kind of thought it would be a good idea to have something not specifically related to my major uh, to go into a minor. So like being in a STEM field, having uh, either a different STEM uh, focus for a minor, so to kind of diversify, or even having a liberal arts. Uh, type of minor, which I ended up doing with the foreign language. Um, and uh, it kind of just came from high school. Uh, I had like the three years of high school, uh, three years of Spanish in high school, and kind of pushed myself to do the fourth year and, you know, started to really enjoy it um, and, you know, still really uh, love learning more about that. And so uh, it kind of just made sense. I was like, you know, why don't I get a minor? I mean, even in freshman year, I was like, man, I could never see myself like, you know, <laughs> having like a Spanish minor and then, you know, that's exactly what I'm doing and doing a study abroad with it. Uh, so, I mean, you never know, um, uh, but again, like me coming out of high school, it just kind of made sense and I uh, just kind of knew I wanted to. Um, so for me, um, mine also stemmed from high school. Um, I took a lot of Project Lead the Way courses in high school and we had a lot of opportunities to do like 3D printing and modeling and using all these computer-aided design programs. And so I always knew, I was really interested in that. I was heavily involved. And I knew I wanted to do something with that because I just found it riveting. Um, when, so when I came here, um, I didn't really know about the CGT minor. Um, so the name of my minor is um, Virtual Product Integration. So it's um, taking that design, integrating on a computer, and actually implementing it, um, say, like for 3D printing or CNC milling or things of that sort. Um, so I just picked that up this past year, or no, this past semester, um, and I just told my advisor, I was like, hey, I'm interested in this, and he was like, go talk to this guy, and then <laughs> it was like a five minute meeting, he's like, this is what you need to take, take this then. Um, I signed up, got into the class I needed, and yeah, and I'm actually um, in the process of trying to be a TA for the class next semester. Oh, though, wow. So. Cool. So it was a relatively easy process to just kind yep. of get, as long as those classes were available yeah, yeah, exactly. to work with your schedule yep. and yeah. take one. One thing to keep in mind, uh, so for instance, being aviation school polytechnic mm -hmm. and then doing a minor in the foreign language, which I believe is a College of Liberal Arts. Yes. College of, one of the, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, thing to keep in mind that the students who have the Spanish minor will have uh, the priority for um, even like uh, signing up for those classes. So like that's one thing you have to keep in mind, like if you're gonna have a minor that is like kind of at least outside of your college for sure, um, you know, you'll have to kind of wait on the availability. Um, so, I mean, 
but of course if you're you know really passionate in doing that you know uh, that shouldn't be a hindrance but just to keep that in mind that you might maybe after you schedule your major specific classes or the parts of your like core mm -hmm. uh, curriculum and then maybe wait a, wait a couple weeks until it opens up for everybody to do that minor uh, class cool. so keep that in mind all right so uh, kind of keeping on that class theme um, some of our students may not have had a chance to visit a college class or um, some students do dual enrollment with an institution that's nearby their home. Um, but if for those who haven't had that opportunity, can you talk about what classes are like here at Purdue in general, uh, and specifically then related to your polytechnic courses? Where are they on campus? What are they like? Lecture versus lab versus recitations? What does all that mean yeah. exactly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can okay, sure. <laughs> speak to that. So a lot of your first year, uh, maybe first three semesters, um, have a few um, like large lecture classes so um, if, I mean even Tech 120 is not necessarily a typical lecture like you would think of but it is uh, probably closer to 30 people in the class um, maybe even like 40 um, uh, in like even in aviation we have bigger lectures with even as much as like a hundred people um, and again starting off those will be all flight and aviation management and uh, uh, UAV pilot and uh, AET majors all taking that but then um, you'll have the smaller more major specific classes as you go along and um, of course that kind of depends on how big is your program so like if they can split into two classes you'll have smaller class sizes um, but uh, a recitation like you mentioned uh, would be mostly for like math um, this the main one I can think of uh, having a math class with a recitation um, uh, it's basically kind of a refresher of the lectures and um, like you'll sometimes you'll have quizzes in the recitation a lot of times you're uh, aside from homework you'll have like quizzes um, in those recitation classes um, and it's like one-on-one -on -one with a TA or um, uh, sometimes even like a grad student TA um, so a little bit about that Another type of class we have is distance learning or hybrid courses. Um, so I'm in, I believe, three, two or three of those right now. It's hard to keep track of. Um, so what that means is you meet once a week um, with your classmates in your section, and um, you talk about what was like. You get assigned stuff on Blackboard, which is like our, it's like our database that we use for like all of our courses, um, where we can talk to the professors and things of that sort. Um, so they'll post um, assignments you have to do for the week, uh, quizzes, um, readings, supplemental readings, videos you should watch, things of that sort, and then you meet once a week and you talk about it and um, you talk with your classmates and things of that sort. So. Yeah, and so just to you know be really clear, um, classroom is like where you're sitting in a lecture hall, there's a PowerPoint deck or mm -hmm. someone's writing something on a chalk and you're taking down notes, that's mm -hmm. classroom lab you're sitting in front of a computer or in front of a other you know sort of like welding machines and yeah. things like that mm -hmm. um, and you're doing something more hands-on recitation is more like helping you with your lab helping you with you know supplemental things really um, for your lecture and then sometimes there are quizzes there mm -hmm. uh, they can help you with homework things like mm -hmm. that and then the flipped classroom is what she mentioned yes. about you take some stuff online and then you come to meet in person to yeah. talk about like discussion and stuff like that yeah a lot of times recitation is open to like more specific questions that might not have been as easy to ask yeah. in lecture like you know it's easier to ask a person who's just leading 30 people rather than like 130 yeah. person lecture mm -hmm. um uh, so yeah, yeah a lot more personal and mm -hmm. just to clarify and, and ta talking about that personal thing if your class size is about 100 your lab is usually the sections for labs so your labs probably about 30 40 yeah maximum yeah. Um, and then your recitation is probably even smaller than that, mm -hmm. or it's 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 a much more close knit group um, in that sense. Yeah. Um, the graphic that we have on the screen right now, uh, the link to the website for answering the call, it's about the Purdue Polytechnic uh, ten elements of learning, the learning environments that's unique to Purdue Polytechnic. So you can check that out and see what is unique to the Polytechnic, the transformation transformational learning experiences and environment that we try to give to our students so you can see what's what's more involved with the detailed um, learning environments that we have available for you. Um, so I want to go into a question maybe I think it was mentioned study abroad before. 
Um, so um, if any of you have had some study abroad experience, you know you mentioned about trying, to, to, yeah. trying to do that uh, a little bit early, plan that out with your advisor. Um, so you said you're about to do the study abroad. Yes. What, can you tell us about that? Yes. So I'll kind of tie it in with another thing. Um, uh, so Maymester has kind of become a word that everybody around Purdue knows. Um, for those who don't know, um, it's essentially a short semester that starts in May. It's not throughout the whole month of May, but uh, Maymester is typically just four weeks. Uh, so you can do that with uh, study abroad or a lot of times uh, a main class you can do in what we call a Maymester, and it'll just be four weeks for that whole class. So you can get like your three credit hour class done in four weeks. And it'll be, you know, pretty, uh, uh, root, like pretty regimented like uh, instead of class twice or three times a week you'll have class like every day for those four weeks um, but Maymester is one way people can do study abroad mm -hmm. so I say that to say mine is through a Maymester but then also two more weeks so ours will be six weeks for actually two classes we'll be taking um, again you know uh, look I definitely encourage people to do study abroad, opportunity to, you know, get out of the country, uh, you know, explore, uh, you know, different uh, cultures, um, you know, even kind of experience what it's like to be in a non-English uh, speaking environment, uh, you know, if you've only been in the States for a while. Um, uh, yeah, mostly what I got to say. Yeah. Um, I actually have had an opportunity to go on a study abroad, and I'll say probably the best thing that happened was I went for a December break study abroad, which is over the winter break, so it's also about three to four weeks, and the same sort of concept. Um, you could also do a semester long or a year long, that the, those are the other options. Um, and one of the best things that happened was that Purdue actually helps you to make this decision to go on a study abroad by giving you some monetary advantages. So in other words, you'll get a little, like a, kind of like a scholarship mm -hmm. that goes towards your uh, tuition fees and other things for that uh, study abroad, which is really nice because whether you're going for a short three to four week thing or whether you're going for a semester long or a year long, there are scholarships available and that can definitely help you make that decision if you're having that financial doubt uh, regarding that. So that's something definitely to think about. And the other thing I wanted to add was um, when you do go on a study abroad, so I went to London, and even though you might think like, oh, London is really similar to here, it's, it's actually really different. <laughs> and so it was good to kind of get that exposure. But And one thing that I learned from that was a lot of networking opportunities. So um, I got to meet some people who had uh, their own sort of like startups and businesses. And then one of them contacted me and said, would you like to come out and work? Um, which is really neat for someone yeah. going out of college if you get a chance to work in London, like that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's also another thing that can come out of it, networking opportunities. Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention, another type of uh, study abroad you can do, um, uh, there are like spring break week long mm -hmm. study abroad uh, trips and typically they will have part of the class that you take, or technically the class part that you take is on campus at Purdue uh, building up to that spring break week so it'll be like the eight or nine weeks before spring break in March um, you'll have either like a once a week uh, kind of seminar type course where um, you are looking about uh, for instance I have a friend who went to Germany so uh, once a week he would uh, they would meet and say um, so this is happening in Germany research it and what do you think about it or how uh, can this affect your um, career goals? Like, if you were to work here, like, how would that affect? Or, um, you know, various things where you're kind of talking about the culture, um, uh, you know, how it relates to your major, especially yeah. if it's only um, MET students or this type of student going on that speci specific trip. Um, they try to really make it applicable for uh, you as a group and you personally. Yeah. Um, but those, that's like another. The week we you would be gone is just a week during spring break, but then you'd have a class portion beforehand, sometimes a few weeks after as well. Yeah, and I just wanted to reiterate one thing right before we move on. Um, it's that, and we kind of talked about this before, but make sure to get that on your academic advisor's radar as well as the study abroad officer's radar because there's a lot of paperwork to do, there's a lot of application to go through and things like that. 
And so if, for example, your study abroad is over December break, and if you go in around October or November and say, I want to take part in it, it might be a little too late. So you, you should decide that you know, kind of at the beginning of the semester, make a decision, and then just let them know. Even if you're half-hearted or half-interested, just let them know, because you can always back out as long as you haven't paid the uh, deposit. Yeah. So Also, tell, tell your parents. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be good for them to know, oh, he's hosting from uh, Zurich, where? So, you know, obviously, you know, let your parents know, yeah. even if you're interested, they might know, even, you know, and let, you know, your friends know, your advisors, professors, because they might even have connections, you know, randomly, oh, yeah, I met some guy a long time ago that is, you know, PhD in this place. Yeah. So, uh, you know, make sure you let people know. Get the uh, word out. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can even network beforehand in anticipation for it, so. Yeah, I, mean, I have actually not studied no, abroad. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, well, John has put up uh, our link to the Office of Globalization that we have with the Polytechnic Institute specifically. So they have uh, study abroad opportunities that are related specifically to the majors and academic departments that we have within the Polytechnic. And there's also, as Abhishek mentioned, the Office of Study Abroad here at Purdue that supports study abroad opportunities that are beyond Polytechnic that where those scholarships are available as well. So you can apply for those depending on the duration of your trip you get a certain amount of money. So very helpful, highly encouraged for all Purdue students to try to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, we had a good question from the chat. Uh, what types of leadership opportunities are available at the Polytechnic in general, or then potentially specifically in your major as well? All right, um, and I hate to hog, but <laughs> I will start. Uh, right. <laughs> so being involved is, you know, there, I guess there's no limit to it at Purdue and then the Polytechnic Institute. So. Um, one of the things that you can always do is there's always a uh, major related club in some sort um, and those are the easiest ones to get involved in because you'll, you'll hear um, email notifications and stuff from them so it's very easy to get involved with that. Um, and then going abroad, you know, going to just a polytechnic wide, one of the you can you can either get involved in an organization, and this actually holds good for Purdue overall. You can either get involved, or you can start your own organization. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of what I did. We started an organization where we wanted to bring together people of differences uh, within the polytechnic and just celebrate those differences. So you could do that, or you could also be involved in things like uh, ambassadors for your college, which are a lot more like you represent um, the college, and you, you can sometimes even go back to your high school and recruit, mm -hmm. Th those are options. And then there are Purdue-wide leadership opportunities, whereas um, things like the orientation program, you can get involved with that and lead a group of students to sort of help them through the transition. Um, there, there's really like a plethora of opportunities. Yeah. Um, and, and if there isn't one, you can start one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Be innovative. Do you have? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, it's OK. Uh, I had. I'll just start talking. I'll, I have a few in mind <laughs> that I could think of. Um, uh, Purdue Student Government, um, yeah. you know, not everybody, uh, I guess, even knows about it, but, uh, you know, while it's on my mind, uh, you know, Purdue Student Government is definitely a way that, you know, if you have interest in, you know, even in the future, even if it's not necessarily related to your major, there are Purdue Student Government representatives from every college. So there are, I believe, three from each. Uh, school or college, something like that, yeah. So like, you know, within Polytechnic as a whole, we have three representatives. Um, so, uh, you know, they will uh, pass bills related to kind of specifically student events. Um, so, you know, that's a way to kind of uh, be kind of a visible um, leader uh, on the campus, um, you know, like student body president, um, or even just like, uh, you know, they hold uh, a lot of, um, uh, power as well within the Purdue Senate, um, you know, you could be involved uh, in that way. And they have a lot of meetings with like the dean of their respective uh, college or um, uh, institute. Um, so that's one way. Um, as going back with what Abhishek said, within like uh, student organizations, um, a really good way to become a leader is to like find what you're really interested in. Um, something that even being part of it, you feel like you could make an effective change. So maybe, and it doesn't even have to just be uh, um, academic related or like professional development, you know, you, you need leaders in, you know, every capacity. Um, so, you know, even if you were uh, doing, um, 
don't know, something like uh, a martial art, um, you know, eventually the current president, treasurer and whatnot, they will graduate and, you know, somebody will have to step up and uh, lead. So those are really, really great opportunities. You can, like, uh, participate for a semester, a year, uh, you know, figure out, you know, where you would like to be a leader and then, you know, just run for the office of that, um, uh, of that student organization and, uh, you know, even you can hold for different years or different semesters, uh, different roles and kind of see even, you know, is that something not kind of, not quite related to your major, but like, you know, being treasurer for a student board, is that something I'd like to, you know, pursue in the future? Um, that's all I can think of for now. Um, yeah, um, I mean, the only thing I really have to say is uh, don't limit yourself into like the types of organizations that you think you might be interested or that you think you know. Um, try to expand your horizons and try something new. Um, even if it's just like a little thing that you know you like, um, you're like, oh, there might not be an organization for that. Um, like Abhishek said, you yeah. start your organization. Mm -hmm. um, there, you are not the only person, um, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> There's 40,000 students on campus. Yeah. yeah so. If you buy free pizza, so many people will yeah. show Yeah. <laughs> it's always a good yeah. That's another, I mean, even not leadership wise, but first week, you should not have to pay for pizza. Any meal. Any, any meal, meal. Any really. meal. Yeah. Every <laughs> night, there should, I mean, first two weeks, there should be free pizza here. You know, go switch it up. This place, oh, they have uh, Chipotle, so I'm going to go there. <laughs> you know, and, you know, something you're uh, interested in. Yeah. But also along that note, uh, it can be easy as you're starting off, especially, you know, uh, if you are have always been like really involved in high school and you're like, oh, I have to be involved in this and this and this and this and this. Uh, while we want to encourage you to find what you're really passionate about and, you know, go get involved, like don't overcommit yourself yeah. or at least like, if you overcommit yourself, make sure that you, like your grades don't suffer. Yeah. Like uh, I'd say, if you're going to overcommit yourself, do it like earlier so you can kind of weed out yeah. what you are most interested in. Um, but still, don't overcommit yourself. Yeah. Like you know, be involved, but you know, have fun with it. And uh, absolutely, no, that's great. I think I think it's important to to be involved in different organizations, but also commit to like you said those student leadership opportunities so that you're showing you know, your f future potential employers that you have a passion for these areas and you've also done that leadership that shows yeah. that you can go beyond just being a member, you can lead that change and make mm -hmm. that difference in that organization specifically. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's definitely yeah. important. Yeah. Another quick word to sure. say, um, uh, we haven't talked a whole lot about like opportunities. Um, like I know some people who, if it's not like a student org, it's actually something that Purdue does. So like uh, Purdue musical organizations, mm -hmm. um, or like uh, even uh, we have a pretty nice theater here, Elliott Hall of Music, um, and I know a couple people who have like worked part time or like volunteered there because it's like maybe something uh, contributing to their major, or it's just something they're really interested in. So you can even be a leader in like you know helping uh, you know do lighting or sound for uh, you know. Uh, different things like that or um, like student concert committee um, you know there's a lot of really really cool opportunities so even, even part-time jobs around yeah. campus yeah. working in the dining courts or a student assistant um, Gabby's <laughs> one of our student assistants <laughs> in our office as well yeah. so um, yeah there's a lot of opportunities there to you know get experience working get paid while you're doing it um, but also then get involved with those right. organizations those departments on campus that you can work yeah. for um, there's one thing as you were talking to show that I wanted to point out we haven't again talked a lot about this, but fraternity, sorority, and cooperative life, yeah. that's a great way to get involved. Um, again, it's really hard to miss, uh, you know, like all these fraternities and sororities and uh, other organizations just trying to like give out their pitch for their welcome night or things like that. Um, and so if you are interested, you know, that's another great way to just uh, give back. And also they do a lot of service related things, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, which is good if you're interested in like community service or philanthropy and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, another question we had from the chat um, regarding any kind of events that happen within your specific department. So the things that are planned that um, you can attend um, that are put on by your department, and if, if so, are they related to learning communities or are those kind of separate from what you're, what you're seeing in, in their department events? So I can start off. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so I mean, I'm not part of a learning community, so I don't, uh, I've never attended a learning community related event. Um, so I guess that question it is kind of separate, but sure. at the same time, within the polytechnic uh, and within your major, there are often some events that are held out. 
Um, sometimes they're networking and professional related. So I know the computer information technology department does that, um, where they bring in people from like employers, uh, and you can just go and chat with them uh, in, a, in a casual manner. There are socials like um, end of year barbecue parties and um, senior send off and these sort of things. That's a good way to one again make some friends and but also have some free food and just enjoy your company or others. Um, and then there are sometimes like uh, and, and, and I'm not so sure about the other majors, but in the polit in the computer information technology major, there are sometimes uh, viewing parties for you know maybe there's a launch of some new product, some new technology. There's a viewing party for that. Um, and, and it really like the opportunity again is like there's a lot within it uh, and if you don't see something and if you want to you know uh, have an op opportunity to like run an event or something just go talk to the department head or someone like that and they'll be able to connect you with the right people to mm -hmm. ensure that that happens mm -hmm. um, oh, okay um, <laughs> a couple things so when you started the question I had one thing in mind then you finished the question I was like <laughs> that apply? Maybe but that I'll say it anyway sure. so um, Okay, I'll come back to that one. Okay. The uh, one that came up uh, as Abhishek was talking, um, cultural events uh, or cultural sensors um, will uh, hold their own events, um, even like seasonal holidays. So um, we have a number of cultural and, um, uh, yeah, I guess I'll say cultural events, I guess is the most uh, inclusive way to describe it. So there's the uh, LGBTQ uh, Center, mm -hmm. there is the Black Cultural Center, Latino Cultural Center, Native American uh, Educational Resource Center, the Asian American and Asian Resource Center, I'm missing any? The International, the inter International, okay. International, yeah. students. International yeah. Student mm -hmm. Center. Um, so a lot of times they will uh, hold like either uh, specific like cultural events like uh, you know, within this culture, this time of year, uh, people celebrate this holiday, and like they'll have different events associated with that. Or um, even, um, like for instance, I know the Black Cultural Center has uh, a few uh, uh, like student organizations within. Uh, so they have Black Voices of Inspiration, a choir. Um, so they'll have uh, performances. They have Haraka Riders, um, and um, I'm forgetting the other one. But essentially, they have a choir, um, new directional players. So the new directional players will write like an original um, play and perform it. Parak writers will do like spoken word, poetry, um, and do that. So like they'll have host their own events, so you can like get involved that way. The other one I actually forget. Okay, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if your specific department like maybe they do host something and you don't know about it. Um, there are other opportunities to find those um, types of things. Um, so for example, I took a women's studies course last semester and our teacher was an advocate for the LGBTQ Center and she was always encouraging us to attend these events and hear these speakers and all these different opportunities to do and they're really interesting and um, I like that we got to share that experience with people from different backgrounds and things that sort of so it expanded our horizons. Um, even like just kind of sorry, no, um, like um, just from example, like my, the Minority Technology Association, we do um, a lot of different events. We do an MLK Day, and then we do like the Hispanic Heritage Month. So we team up with like the LCC and the BCC for different events. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of opportunities for collaboration. Yes, I actually just remembered what <laughs> yeah. the first initial <laughs> one was. So uh, he mentioned just like departmental events. Mm -hmm. So actually, this Saturday we have Aviation Day. Um, so within the last actually like four years, uh, uh, it has kind of come back up and like uh, gained steam and uh, gained um, uh, notoriety or at least uh, attention, but uh, uh, essentially it's um, aviation uh, school's way to kind of give back to the community to uh, kind of promote aviation. Um, uh, so it does a couple things, I'll, um, but we'll have some aircraft here for people to, uh, I believe, tour. Um, I've heard that this year it's free. I know in the past there was a small charge if you wanted to eat, but um, free, um, okay. Uh, hearing, getting, shaking heads and whatnot. Um, free to enter. Free to enter. Free cost. Free cost, there we go. <laughs> um, so uh, that's, I mean, that's one way, uh, kind of along that vein. Um, April, everything happens, like there's so many events going on. So a couple weeks ago there was Spring Fest before, like that week before was, I believe, Ag Week. So the School of Agriculture, um, 
I mean, student organizations uh, and just like the department had this whole week where it's devoted to uh, educating students about agriculture. So they had, uh, you can pet baby goats on the lawn and learn <laughs> about goat Purdue goats. Free will yeah. cheese. Free grilled cheese. Free grilled cheese, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, this is Earth Week, so I think it's the School of Science that's uh, doing that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, there's there's so many I can't even mention them all, but <laughs> a lot lot going on. All right, so we're we're almost out of time, but I'm asking one more question. Um, what is your favorite thing about Purdue? Real easy, hopefully simple question. <laughs> What's your favorite thing? You guys want to start off? I I need to thank you. <laughs> Only one thing. <laughs> Just yeah, pick, pick one. Why not? Oh, one of I was favorites. like everything. One of your favorite things. Um, I'll, I'll go. Uh, opportunities. I think because as an international student, I came here and I was kind of like everything. I had to start everything from scratch. And I think even if you're from West Lafayette, um, it's still a new beginning for you. Mm -hmm. And just the opportunities that are there really lifts you as a person, changes you, makes you more uh, motivated, inspired, and also matured. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I look back after completing my senior year and I'm thinking, wow, like I've grown all because of these opportunities, whether they be professional or social opportunities or educational opportunities. Um, I think just there's just a lot of it and sometimes you want to capture all of them, but it's really hard. Yes. <laughs> Mine was just building off the same thing. The opportunity is the ability to expand and to try different things. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the greatest things about Purdue because it's so diverse. Um, people come from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's my favorite thing about it. Yeah. Um, the food is really good. <laughs> that, it, it's it, true. It, it actually yeah. is really good here. Like even at, uh, the dorms have good food. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say, uh, a lot of opportunities to connect to uh, different people. Um, I mean, many of the ways we've already mentioned, but uh, you know, you'll see somebody in class, and then maybe you'll also see them in the same uh, student org call up. Be like, hey, you know, you're interested in uh, Pokemon Club or Quidditch too. Uh, you know, just a lot of really cool ways to connect, and you know, throughout your years, to stay connected. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining us tonight and yeah. being able to share your experiences awesome. and. Uh, what you've done here on campus with our admitted students. Um, well, for those who are watching, if you have any questions, if we weren't able to get to them on the chat um, for our students to respond to, please send those to our tech recruit at purdue.edu email address. We'll be able to respond to that, get you some good information um, and regarding everything you want to know about Purdue and the Poly Polytechnic Institute specifically. Um, but thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, Please email us. Please get in touch with us. We want you to be able to ask those questions, and we want to give you that information. We want to see you here next fall to join us at the Polytechnic yes, Institute. Yes, so here. Um, come here, <laughs> as they all said. Boiler up. Boiler up. Boiler up. Uh, thank you again, and have a great evening.